Welcome to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. And it is a beautiful... I hope you guys, hope you guys got out. It's a beautiful fall day today. I mean, I went for a walk. I feel like a million bucks. And that's not nearly enough because everything is getting so expensive. <laughs> today, the Labor Department revealed that U.S. inflation reached a 30-year high in October. That's the highest since 1990. Back then, economists said this about the price of a gallon of milk. You're unbelievable. <laughs> all your favorite stuff. All your, all your favorite stuff is more expensive. Prices have gone up for autos, energy, furniture, rent, and medical care. That is terrible. One of my favorite things is being mobile, warm, comfortable, dry, and alive. <laughs> But these rising prices might not even matter if you can't find any stuff to buy. And I'll tell you all about the latest shortages in tonight's Cargo Unchained. But wait, there's less. We've been hearing a lot about food shortages, but now there's a shortage of the place the food goes. Because America is facing a takeout box and to-go cup shortage. <laughs> which is why McDonald's has started serving the 20-piece McHandful. It's not just... It goes right anyway. It saves time. It just saves time, man. Just hold it with that, though. Just, just put my mouth right over the deep fryer. <laughs> it's not just things. It's the people who bring the things to the places where the things go. Shipping companies are experiencing a shortage of truck drivers who haul more than 70% of domestic cargo shipments. The other 30% is hauled by moms with minivans in the Costco parking lot. <laughs> now, <laughs> some trucker moms here tonight. <laughs> to end the shortage, the trucking industry is working on recruiting more women and young people. Yes, we need to tell the youths trucking doesn't have to be isolating. They all talk to each other all the time. We just need to update the CB radio slang. Uh, breaker, breaker, what's up, fam? This is your boy, Postal Malone. <laughs> I'm about to high-key yeet these packages straight to your crib, no cap. That's the T. It's a vibe, squad. 10-4. Chalamet. <laughs> That's a big Chalamet, my friend. <laughs> There's also bad news about Santa, the trucker of the sky. <laughs> Due to labor shortages, Santa's are in short supply. Now, if there are any children watching at home, go to bed. <laughs> also, Santa is fine. He's just trapped in a shipping container off the coast of Shenzhen, China. <laughs> but he's got plenty of reindeer to keep him company, and he probably won't eat more than one. <laughs> Here's the deal. With COVID restrictions lifting, demand for Santas is on the rise, but amongst the Santian community, concerns about the virus are still high since actors who play Santa tend to skew toward older, heavier-set men. <laughs> so, we obviously need skinny actors with beards. So, kids, say hello to jolly old Saint Jared Leto. <laughs> really? I guess so. I guess so. I've never seen Santa with abs. It's disturbing. <laughs> now, if you can't get a Santa, you might be able to get his better half because some of the Santa gigs are being filled by Mrs. Claus, who's increasingly getting solo bookings. That's great. But since she's doing her own appearances, maybe we stop calling her Mrs. Claus. Her name is Kathy. <laughs> but she likes snowboarding and online poker. But you never thought to ask that, did you? <laughs> Speaking of old, fat men in red hats, former President Air Force One... <laughs> ...this week... Right there. Do we have a time machine? Do we get a time machine? This week, the January 6th Select Committee has subpoenaed 16 former associates of the former president, including Michael Flynn, Stephen Miller, and Secretary of Health and Human Services, Chicken Bucket. <laughs> the committee has also subpoenaed hundreds of pages of White House communications during the lead-up to January 6th. The former president sued the National Archives to prevent the release of anything. But last night, a federal judge denied his attempt to withhold records from the January 6th committee. <laughs> Woo! 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 Here comes... 
<laughs> Here comes the judge. <laughs> that is the worst denial for the former president since any time he tried to hold his wife's hand. The former president. Here's the deal. The former president was arguing that even though President Biden had waived it, as a former president, he retained a residual right to assert executive privilege. You don't get to keep any part of a job you lost. <laughs> That's why it's all gone. That's why you didn't see Christian Bale playing Dick Cheney in a Batman suit. <laughs> The judge did not buy that argument either. In her ruling last night, she wrote that the former president's request to assert executive privilege is outweighed by Biden's decision not to uphold it because there can be only one president at a time. <laughs> there it is. There can only be room for one in this time. But not in my hit new CBS sitcom, President Twins. <laughs> one's a Republican, one's a Democrat, both are hilarious. <laughs> then the judge delivered the knockout blow, writing, presidents are not kings and plaintiff is not president. <laughs> Damn. Damn. I have not seen such a brutal attack on an elected official since January 6th. Speaking of liars, we have an update about Green Bay Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers. Seen here consulting his doctor. <laughs> In the last week, Rodgers tested positive for coronavirus, revealed that he had lied about his vaccination status, and admitted that he takes ivermectin. Sounds bad, but what kind of judgment do you expect from a guy who appears on national television with a man bun? <laughs> Turns out being an anti-science liar is something some corporations don't want to be associated with because this weekend, Prevea Health, a healthcare organization in Green Bay, announced that it was terminating its partnership with Rogers effective immediately. Okay. Effective immediately. So the opposite of ivermectin. But not all of the quarterback's corporate partnerships are ending because despite the controversy, State Farm announced it's standing by Rogers. Okay, you can stand by him, but mask up. He's not vaccinated and he's got COVID. <laughs> this means Rogers, this means Rogers is now the insurance spokesman most associated with crazy conspiracy theories. And keep in mind, one of them is an actual lizard man. <laughs> Apparently, this controversy uh, took Rogers by surprise because Rogers didn't expect the negative response and is very unhappy. Oh according to a source. That source? His face. <laughs> so, so, yesterday, Rogers went back on the podcast that got him in trouble in the first place and said this. I made some comments that, that people might have uh, felt were misleading. And, uh, you know, to anybody who felt misled by those comments, I take full responsibility for those comments. But in the end, I have to stay true to who I am and what I'm about. That's what's called a conditional apology. Yeah, I lit some matches that some people may have felt burned down the garage, and <laughs> to anyone who feels the garage is now a smoldering pile of ash, I take full responsibility, but I gotta stay true to who I am, a pyromaniac. So, <laughs> if you'll excuse me, hand me that can of gasoline, the flames are calling my name. Daddy's coming. Daddy's coming, my children. Rogers rogered on. Hate is not going to uh, bring us out of this uh, pandemic. It's going to be connecting and, and, and love. No, it's going to be masks and vaccines. <laughs> you can't get into my audience because you went to the love tester and got hot tamale. Yesterday, the NFL fined Rodgers and the Packers for violating COVID-19 protocols. Whew! Now that COVID protocols are being enforced, we can get back to safely enjoying the beautiful game of 300-pound men crushing each other's spines like a sleeve of Ritz crackers. <laughs> Rodgers attended a Halloween party despite being unvaccinated, 
for which the NFL fined him $14,650, which sounds like a lot of money, but it's the equivalent of fining an average American $33.80. Or one beer at a Packers game. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers is not alone. A lot of middle-aged men are hesitant to get vaccinated, so some businesses are now giving out incentives. For instance, in Austria, a brothel is offering free sex to patrons who get the vaccine on site. No word on the brand of vaccine, but I assume it's Johnson & Johnson, then Johnson. We got a great show for you tonight. My guest is Aubrey Plaza, and I'll be giving the Colbert questionnaire to one Mr. Bruce Springsteen. But when we come back, is your sex life hurting the Earth? And if so, is the Earth into it?